Hey guys, Ollie from Flight Comp here, and I have built an Infinity Evo standard X-Tail for a customer, and I thought it'd, it'd be a good opportunity to kind of go over um, some of my build notes with you. Maybe it'll help some of you guys out there. So the first thing I started with was the uh, installation of the servos in the wings. The kit is supplied with servo ROM and IDS, and the uh, horns and arms for the IDS are pre-installed from the factory but you do have to install the trays and the servos into the wing. Um, a really good t tip is to scuff up the bottom of the tray really well with some coarse sandpaper. And I actually drill a few holes around the perimeter of the, the servo frame to let the epoxy sort of ooze up through the hole so you can get a really good bond. I recommend you use a very high quality epoxy. Um, the slower the cure, the better. If you use a fast drying epoxy, something under like a two hour cure time, the epoxies develop heat and in the fast curing cycle, it can actually distort and warp the upper surface of your wing. So if you ever see a model that has um, like a bunch of bumps and stuff where the servos are, like a, a molded composite model obviously, um, that is typically from uh, a poor servo tray installation and using kind of a fast curing epoxy. So get yourself a high quality epoxy. Um, West Systems makes some great epoxies. Pacer Technologies makes some great epoxies. And if you can get your hands on MGS, that would be ideal. Try to have uh, three hours more curing time. I use an epoxy I get from uh, Aircraft Spruce. That's a 24 hour curing time. I just do it and let it sit for a day and you usually get uh, pretty good installations. So let's take a look at the uh, servo installation. Okay, so here's a flap servo, and for the flaps, I used the third arm in. Now, my kit came with uh, five arms on this tree. There may have been one here, but it was removed before I got the kit, so if you start from the smallest arm, it's the third one over and that works out perfectly for the uh, for the flap. And then over on the aileron, over here, I just use the shortest arm possible that came with the kit, and you get plenty of uh, throw on the aileron. Even, even with that small arm, um, you get uh, probably a little too much throw. So I use some epoxy mixed with a lot of micro balloons to tie this little pad here to the top skin that'll just strengthen up the servo bay area. This is the aileron servo. And on the flap servo, I actually put a piece of lightweight balsa behind the servo going to the spar, and there's a little bit of epoxy underneath that. So it basically ties the servo to the spar. And I've also tied the top skin to the pad. Um, the gap was much bigger, so there's a piece of balsa in there as well. Again, that'll just help stiffen up um, the servo bay, probably more uh, useful on the flaps and the ailerons, but uh, you know, it doesn't hurt. It only adds a marginal amount of weight. Next thing I did after I got the wings done was I put the wings on the fuselage here and just kind of dropped in the components, motor, speed control, servos, battery, receiver, uh, altitude device, Altus in this case, and I put everything on my uh, CG machine to get an idea of where the CG is, like from the start, and if I have to move things around to get the CG closer to where I wanted. And in, in this case, I um, did move the servo tray around a little bit to get the CG close to where I thought it should be. Um, also, I have some quick video on the rudder horn uh, installation. The included rudder horn is quite large, so I actually cut it down substantially. And you can see I've kind of put some notches in it and scuffed it up to get it ready for bonding. And I'm cutting a slot through the back of the rudder here so I'm not opening up a giant channel. It doesn't really matter either way, but this will look a little cleaner. And one important thing is the, I found the hole that was drilled in the horn was undersized for the L-bend in the push rod. So make sure you drill that hole out to one and a half millimeters, 1.5 millimeters, uh, before you glue it in. Otherwise, you're gonna have to try to drill it while it's on the rudder and that could be a, kind of a hard task. Next up, 
are the uh, servo 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 arms and uh, the clevis uh, a little modification on the rudder clevis. Um, so you can take a look at that video right now. A few quick notes on the servo installation um, on the ele elevator side. I tried to use the longest horn possible to get as much throw on the elevator as I can because the control horn on the elevator is very long so you need a long uh, servo arm as well. Now on the rudder I'm using a very short servo arm. See that guy there? And in order to get as much throw as I wanted uh, I had to grind the clevis a little bit. You can see that on the underside so that when the, the, the push rod goes forward it has a little more clearance on the uh, on the shaft of the servo arm here. After all that I put the model back on the CG machine and got my final CG. I think it was 117 and I wanted it to be closer to 120 or even between 120 and 126. So I did my best um, with the motor installation and, and the layout here. I could have cut back the firewall a little bit to get my CG closer, but since my customer wanted to use a specific motor that's a little bigger than I would have chosen, and he used a 60 amp speed control, which is also a little bigger than I would have chosen, I didn't really have much room to play with here, so cutting the firewall back would have really um, cramped everything up in here. So I chose just to left it, leave it at the a standard 30 millimeters. We'll fly it at 117. I think it'll be a, a fine starting point. And just a gram or two of weight probably on the tail will get it, you know, past uh, 120 if, if we need to do that. Now, when I did the uh, sort of the introduction or parts overview on the Infinity, there was a little fiberglass piece that I, I wasn't quite sure what it was. I thought maybe it was part of the rudder horn. But it turns out it's actually a, a brace for a pin that supports the um, the rudder hinge itself. It's, it's kind of a neat uh, setup. So I, I shot a little video of, of that and you can check that out right now. In my um, introduction video or parts overview um, on the Infinity Evo, there was a little uh, part that I really didn't know uh, what it was for. I thought it was part of the rudder. I thought it was the rudder horn initially, but it turns out it wasn't. Um, anyway, here's the rudder horn installation. It's just a standard um, standard installation. There's an L-bend that uh, goes through the horn. So the other little piece is actually on the other side. I don't know if you can see it in here. It's right in there and it's glued into the fuselage it's you know a piece of machined fiberglass or G10 plate and it has a hole in it and um, it's actually a pin or a receptacle for a pin um, for the rudder so let me just remove the rudder Might need a tool to help with the L bend. There we go. So there's the the horn. And you can see on the other side of the rudder, there's a little metal pin right there. Anyway, you get the idea. There's a hole and it just slides in there and I just put a drop of CA on it to fix it in. And see in here, that's where the plate goes. And there's just a little hole drilled in there, and that basically, it's basically just a support for the uh, hinge line, because it's on the hinge line. 
So when you slide the rudder in, the pin drops into a hole in this plate, and that basically acts like a hinge, and it also supports the uh, the live hinge on the rudder. And that I just glued that in with a little bit of a uh, that black um, flexible super glue or CA. Another quick note is that the push rods from basically here or at the servo all the way to about here are not supported. There's no tubing uh, or, or outer sheath. So what I did was I cut a few lengths of plastic tubing about uh, 20 millimeters long and slipped them on the push rod before I glued the couplers and clevises on and I've glued those uh, onto the side of the fuselage so there's basically an anchor point here and here so now it's supported here here and here so it's much more rigid and the push rods are less likely to, to bow under load well that's it guys that was a uh, overview of my build some notes for you I hope some of you guys would find this information helpful um, many of the things we talked about would apply to other models not necessarily just the infinity but if you are thinking about uh, buying or building an infinity this would probably help you out a lot too so thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one